Good morning. Welcome to <clears throat> 50 Question Friday is what we're calling it. Let me silence my phone here. Um, so today we're going to talk about whatever you guys have for questions on the Tensor Tools. Um, I've had a few people emailing in questions here for this particular webinar. And you guys are welcome to ask questions here, either on the question board or on the chat. Um, see, we have 24 right now and a few people still joining in. So welcome and thank you for being here. <clears throat> so let's get started with some of the questions that have already been posted here. And one is, does a water ring work on a stainless steel bottle? And actually, before we do 50 questions, you guys, let's start this webinar as we would start any webinar. By connecting, going into the sacred space, the heart, and grounding. So here we go. You can close your eyes if you wish or leave them open. You're welcome to participate with this. Simply putting your attention onto your physical heart. And that's where we find our light, our soul's fire. And just imagine connecting that to the heart of the earth. And just breathing that energy into the heart. Second, connecting to source, soul, creator, God. And breathing that energy into the heart. <clears throat> and then third breath, breathing in both earth and sky into the heart at once. Mixing that together and expanding it out. Awesome. I know that helps me function a lot better um, being in the heart space. Good morning, Rosa. All right. So back to the question. Does a water ring work on a stainless steel bottle? Um, yes, the, the tensor fields will go through any material whatsoever. Um, Personally, I like stainless steel for, for my water vessels. Um, but yeah, tensor rings, the tensor fields go through any material. So as far as working with water, um, and as far as the tensor fields go, you can use any material. <clears throat> and then we have a question from Linda. Let's see, uses for a golden ring, bought a two inch. All right. so. For using a two inch golden fire ring, basically all the golden fire rings are the same energetics. They're the same power and potency no matter the size, whether it's a one inch or 29 inch. So the reason that we make all different sizes of each of these frequencies of tools is for our physical uses. Um, like let's say the large 29 inch ring, you would use that to put over yourself to put above your headboard, to sleep within the column at night, um, you know, to sit in, to meditate. Now for the two inch ring, now this is a two inch Wi-Fi ring, which is also the golden fire, but uh, Linda's asking about a two inch golden fire, I'm assuming the heavier duty ring. Now the two inch rings are just a great one that you can wear in your pocket, carry on your person anywhere because having them in your field is gonna be doing the work. The two inch rings, you can also use them like on a water bottle. You can use the two inch rings for electromagnetics so you can put it onto your laptop. Um, so the two inch ring is simply just a compact version of the golden fire rings that you can use for whatever various uses you wish to transform energy, to raise the frequency and vibration of things, such as a two inch ring is one that I also will use in my essential oils. So I'll put that ring over my bottle of essential oils and it'll raise the frequency and vibration of that because with oil and water, especially with oil, the tensor fields are gonna put that spin rate to that molecule and it'll just raise the frequency and vibration of it. Uh, next question from Diane. What's the most potent tool com combination for assisting with wayward spirits? Um, we made the Wings of Talk 
to be specifically for use um, for people that were dealing with these wayward ghosts, um, things like that. Any of the golden fire tools are going to assist with crossing over ghost waywards. But we made the Wings of Talk specifically for doing a lot of those higher level entity clearing things um, where people would have an entity attachment um, or else they have a portal vortex where entities are coming through. The Wings of Talk has been a great one for that. Just for your standard ghost waywards, the Golden Fire Generator is a great tool for clearing the environmental. Um, also, another tool for working with ghost waywards is the Golden Fire and Light Wand. Now, that's a fantastic one where you can create the columns of light. And the columns of light that we make with that, with the Golden Fire, simply the Golden Fire field, when a ghost or a wayward comes within that field, their soul comes in to activate the sacred heart and as the soul comes in the soul takes them across so really one of the best tools for clearing ghost waywards is actually anchoring columns of light so if you check out one of our videos called light anchoring 3.0 that is our most recent version of columns of light and that does phenomenal for crossing over wayward spirits uh, let's see, and then our next question from Bill. Greetings, how do elementals affect viruses? Uh, Kaleem and wind elementals especially. So the, the elementals basically are, the elemental symbols that we create are simply a connection to the actual spirit of that elemental. So with Kaleem, um, Kaleem and Plymela, so we have the wind and the air. And Plymela is simply, you know, it's kind of called the wind, but it is a mover of energy of all energies. So Plymela can move fire, ether, water, air. Um, so the question was about Kaleem uh, for, for the air elemental. So basically when you are connecting to any of these elementals, you are basically just talking to the spirit. It's just a way to connect with the spirit of them. So we have connected with um, Kaleem and Plymela, you know, when we're at a family event and we got wind blowing, we're like, hey, you know, Kaleem and Plymela, could, could you please, um, you know, create a nice sphere around us so that we can have a nice, calm and peaceful, you know, picnic outing, whatever. Um, so that's how you would connect with them. Now, as far as affecting viruses with this, Viruses are a field of consciousness. And so you can ask the air or the wind to be clean and purified and to blow the physical airborne contaminants out of your field, certainly. And that's what I would suggest is if you're using Kaleem or Plymela, just ask them to create that clean and clean and clear air around you. Uh, a question from Samson. Morning, Samson. Uh, what does the cosmic sun disk do to yourself and all those that enter your field? So the cosmic sun disk, to me, the number one thing that it is doing is it is bringing in higher torsion fields. It is bringing in these troidal fields that work within your physical molecules. So basically it's putting a high spin rate to the physical molecule doing that all right and we're back again that was strange my tab just crashed there let me close windows on my computer um yeah i'm i'm a person who keeps like 50 open all the time so i will close some of these so crash again my apologies there you guys all right so i was answering samson's question about uh having the cosmic sun disc for those who enter your field so basically yep the cosmic sun disc is one that we see as producing um a high spin rate that will then come into the body and create the high spin rate within the physical cells of the body. And as that does that is cleaning, clearing, releasing dense energies. 
Um, so the cosmic sun disk, which are, you know, the, the torus made with three generation rings and it's higher connecting. So if you're wearing a sun disk, like I used to wear a three inch one on my chest, when people come into that field, when you're wearing it, it is basically doing the same to them in that it is, um, bringing in a higher connection for them, bringing them more into the heart space and it is doing the cleaning and clearing on the physical, um, and again, if I don't answer your questions fully and completely, please do re-ask. Uh, so Diane asks, if a person already has tools that the company, that accompany the small pyramid, can they just purchase the parts of the pyramid they don't have? Yes, for the mini ascension pyramid, Diane was asking, if you already own like the wings of talk um, or the regeneration Taurus, which is the cosmic sun disk, Basically, we've set it up so that on the website you can purchase just the single pieces. Now, keep in mind when you go to the mini Ascension Pyramid website that um, you can buy all five pieces, but it takes all five pieces to create the field that that mini Ascension Pyramid has. Buying just the pyramid isn't going to do it, but we do have it set up so that you can buy them piece by piece which is really a phenomenal way to do it because each one of the pieces to that five piece set is phenomenal. Um, let's see. And then a question, what is the best choice for sleeping? All right. So the best choice for sleeping to me is the larger practitioner rings. Now the practitioner rings are, you know, they're simply the, the larger tensor rings that you can place at your headboard because the rings create a column of light. So let's say this is your headboard. This is right up against the wall where you're sleeping. You put this ring right here on your headboard. And then when you are sleeping, you are sleeping right within this column of light. So when you are within that column of light is where we know where we get the best sleep. Now, there's a small percentage of people who get a practitioner ring, and it doesn't matter the frequency. I would suggest not the regeneration for trying to sleep, either the harmony or the golden fire. Now, when you sleep with that above your head, there's a small percentage of people who have a restless night's sleep for two or three nights as they're becoming accustomed to that field and it's doing its work. But then after that, it brings phenomenal sleep. Um, and of course, other people also mention having the, the golden fire and light wand near them while they sleep. Um, so a lot of people report having good sleep with the golden fire and light wand. And also those of us who have the mini pyramid, that's what we're noting too, is, is a good sleep. All right, next question from Glenn. Hi, Brian. Is it okay to put the golden fire and light wand inside the golden fire coil? I wear it around my neck all day. Yes, using the tools together will synergize and amplify each other. And sometimes it brings through something greater than the two. So having the, the wand inside of the coil is a fantastic thing. Um, it does amplify the energetics. Uh, question here, when pulling large tensor rings over the head and body is is it effective because the field goes in two directions at the point of the metal? So if I'm understanding this right of the question of taking like the larger practitioner rings and you pull it down over the person, over the body. And the question was, is it effective because the field goes in two directions at the point of the metal? Now, yes, they're the very epicenter of a ring is creating the most potent part of the field. This is the epicenter of it because you have a counter rotating vortex going one way and a counter rotating vortex going the other way. So basically within this ring, there's a column of light going both ways, but right there in the very center in the middle of the ring, that flat plane is the most potent part of that ring. So when you do run a larger ring over a person, right there in the epicenter of the ring is where you can feel things. That's where you use that ring for scanning. And that is also the epicenter of the ring as it comes down over the person is where it is doing the most work. 
Um, so using those practitioner rings over the body is phenomenal. Uh, question from Rosa. During this new crisis, I noticed I am looking at many miscreations in the sense of limiting beliefs. What principles do I keep in mind when I work with miscreations? So the miscreations that Rose is talking about are the things that we've done with the harmonic creation field trio, where basically with that trio, we do a meditation to where you stand within that column of light with that harmonic creation field trio, those three set of rings. And once you activate the heart and you have all of your cells shining as the sun, as is your heart, then there's this field of miscreations that opens. And this field of miscreations is throughout our lifetimes of things that we've created in the old way, the duality way of creation. So they are creations that no longer serve us. Um, so the miscreations in the sense of limiting beliefs, what principles do I need to keep in mind when I work with miscreations being in the heart? And that's truly it. Because if, if you see something that you feel or judge as a miscreation, um, first of all, to determine what a miscreation is, you need to be in the heart so that you're seeing it from a higher perspective, because when we see things from here, we can see things that we can judge as, well, we just judge. And so if you can be in the heart space during all of this, when you're in the heart, the things that you look out and see are not the same when you're here as you are in the heart. So how to work with these things, these, these beliefs, these limiting beliefs, just be in the heart space, um, send them light. Tomorrow we're going to have a really phenomenal webinar tomorrow, four o'clock mountain time, Saturday the 4th. So please join us there because we'll do some fun work. Another question, um, putting the golden fire ring within a regeneration Gaia sphere, is this the same energy as the golden fire Gaia? So if you have a either a tensor field generator or a Gaia sphere of a specific frequency and you add another frequency of ring to it, it will basically consider that the sphere is a broadcaster. So the sphere is going to be broadcasting. Let's say it's a regeneration sphere, Gaia sphere or generator. And that is broadcasting that field of the regeneration ring. Now you put a golden fire ring inside of that and the field of the golden fire will be able to access and be broadcast out. So you're not necessarily at all changing the properties of the sphere into the other frequency because each of the spheres made out of the different frequencies have different properties, different things that they do. Like the regeneration Gaia sphere, it is doing this grounding, connecting, expanding, where the golden fire Gaia sphere is doing this heart connecting. But if you're putting different frequencies inside of there, simply you are just putting the frequency inside of the sphere, that frequency is being broadcast, but it doesn't bring the same properties as that specific sphere made with that specific frequency. I hope I answered that okay. <laughs> All right. And again, please do re ask questions if we need. Is there a speed or hertz associated with the tensor field? So the earlier tensor rings, like what Slim Sperling were, was making, like the 144 megahertz and the 177 megahertz, those ones all had a measurable frequency within the very epicenter of the ring. You could drop an oscilloscope that was tuned within a certain bandwidth. So, like oscilloscopes, gosh, they've been around since like 1950s. People have been using these things and testing. So, an oscilloscope basically, you would put the sensor right inside the ring, and that oscilloscope would have to be able to read within that bandwidth. So, like the 144 megahertz, um, that specific oscilloscope is dropped in here. It could read the frequency of 144, 177. Now, with the different and those were those specific qubit measures that produce those measurable frequencies as soon as we got up to the galactic ring 
it all shifted. Then the harmony ring, the golden fire, the regeneration ring, all those specific qubit measures, there is no single measurable frequency within the ring. So let's say even the 333 megahertz ring that we create, which dances with water, calls the earth resonance ring. The 333 megahertz is actually a, usually a two or a 320, a 332.9 megahertz, unless it's above a body of water, then it shifts to like 336 megahertz. So it oscillates the megahertz of that. But then once we get into, like I say, the galactic, the harmony, the um, regeneration, the golden fire, they have so many different frequencies within that tensor field. So these are producing fields, tensor fields. Within the fields, you can find a whole band with the frequencies. Once we started getting into these higher consciousness, higher connecting rings and working with the etheric templates, we began to put the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, all the rays of light, all that stuff, the frequencies and properties we began to put within the ring, starting with the galactic and onward. So all the newer rings, if you put an oscilloscope in here, for one moment you might pick up a specific frequency in that because they will always change, the tensor fields will always bring through the different frequencies of the person who's within the field, the person holding the ring, and what that person needs at any given moment. So the frequencies are always shifting, changing, and multi-layered. So no, there is not a specific megahertz associated with all the newer tensor rings. A question from Christopher. I have told a lot of other, I have a lot of older frequency-based tools, such as the 144 megahertz. You mentioned that the older tools were falling away. Does this mean that they are no longer beneficial? Are they limiting in some way? So like the 144 megahertz, the 177, the 188, um, basically they're still good for a lot of people. It just depends on where you are at, where your vibration is at, um, where you as a whole complete being, so your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, wherever your vibratory field is at is where you're going to be attracted to for the tools. And, you know, I don't want to say that, that they're a lesser frequency or anything like that, but as time went on and as we were creating new frequencies here at Twisted Sage Studios, I found that uh, my body no longer liked the older frequencies that they just i did not need them anymore my body said nope no 144 megahertz for me and so that's just kind of how it has gone along is that like the 144 and such of the older frequencies personally i just don't use them um my body doesn't like them so basically it would be individual specific so just test it muscle test it have people feel it a great way to for a person to feel whether a ring is beneficial or not take it put it to your sternum and do the you know one way to do it for muscle testing is you can put anything at your sternum you're standing up you'll either lean forward into it or you'll be repelled backwards or else you'll just be able to feel so for me using the sternum is a great place to bring something to see whether my body likes it or not. I can usually tell right away. Um, but you know, there's a lot of other ways of muscle testing or dowsing to find out what is good. I douse for pendants, I use the pendants and I'll ask them, is this health phone beneficial for me today? So that's why I'm wearing this one today. I hope that answers the question, Chris. Um, Pamela, can you expand on pyramid and parallel universes? So with the mini ascension pyramid, we talked about that on how it connects through multiple universes. So basically what, what we were seeing was, um,
we used to think that there were so many different universes and they were all outside of us. But it's kind of like seeing things as dimensions, as frequencies, in that within this space that we see as a physical reality, we don't see with our physical eyes dragons, angelic beings, um, higher dimensional beings, because they are all in a different frequency level and layer. So what we are seeing is that, and it's kind of like the human. So the human is only one part of who we are. Um, this is only one aspect. You know, we're also an emotional field, mental field, um, all the auric fields, the soul, all the different levels and layers that we are that exist throughout different dimensions and planes. So that is what we mean by having these other universes in regards to the the mini pyramid now pamela if i'm not ans asking this question right please do re-ask your question but basically the question was can you expand on pyramid and parallel universes and that's what we were seeing with the pyramids is that it is connecting through all these different universes and bringing them all into this here now heavy stuff we could this is not a very good answer to that question because it is so expansive and we have to like basically go through different concepts along the way so hopefully that answered that right please do re-ask that question if you need can infinite light pendant correct dispense the nucleus of cells that's a good question can it correct the spins of the nucleus of cells I don't know how to answer that question because I've never really looked at that. I do know that the tensor fields and the infinite light pendant is really a phenomenal one, is that we've used the tensor rings to work with chakras that are not spinning correctly. And you put the ring over the chakra and it spins, right? Um, vortexes, like non-beneficial vortexes we did a video gosh years ago about the money vortex vortex that came out of a dollar bill it was a non-beneficial vortex basically you put a ring over it and it would change the spin rate of that vortex so i guess to answer the question can it correct the spin of nucleus of cells is i would say it would um just out of experience of what we've seen the tensor fields bring in a coherency to all moving spinning matter because we see all matter as being a torsion field a torus um, so that's just the way most all matter spins and so the tensor fields are bringing coherency to those fields is the gaia sphere similar to the harmony generator um and actually the the harmony generators are I'm sorry, the tensor field generators and the Gaia spheres, um, no matter what cubit measure they're, they're made out of, are different. Um, they both have different properties to them. They may have the same frequency, they'll have the same sphere of influence. So the Gaia spheres will be doing everything that the tensor field generators do. So the Gaia spheres are just doing more. There's more properties the ways energy flow there's more there's different things that the gaia spheres do beyond what the tensor field generator does so a tensor field generator simply is working as a sunshine of energy um, the gaia sphere different frequencies of gaia spheres are doing different things they're just they're they're another level up of sphere from the generators and that would be very specific to each of the frequencies um, and then we did have the webinar on the Gaia spheres that kind of describes a little bit between each of the frequencies of Gaia's uh, another question I sleep with the golden fire collapse bracelet under my pillow every night so the the golden fire generator that you collapse down and it's a bracelet then um, sleep with it under my pillow every night the other day, I started placing the wings of talk inside under my pillow. I experienced mental, physical, and etheric heat, like almost felt like my entire body was on fire. Have you felt this? What are other combinations? So 
with any of these tools, when you start adding them together, they will amplify each other. So we used to see that when you take a just a tensor ring and you add another tensor ring with it, it increases the, oh, wow, gosh, power and potency are two not the really the right words to describe tensor fields but when you add a second ring it does increase the power and potency of the field by about 23 percent and so when you start adding different tools together um, you are just increasing the potency of the field now so when samson was asking about um he felt like his entire body was on fire that simply was just doing phenomenal work. Um, and that's it. When you can feel your body, when you're checking in, when you're around these tools and you feel different sensations going on in your body, you know that it's doing work. It, it is doing the physical work on the bodies because these tools are working with the telomeres within you know, your DNA. They're doing some pretty phenomenal things on the physical Um so, and then uh, Samson asks about what are other combinations. And that's it to just please do play with the tools. If you have, have some of these tools, just start playing with combinations. Um, that's how a lot, of, a lot of new tools that we have are born. Uh, the activator was made because a lot of people started putting parts and pieces together and created the activator and people all over were creating that same set of you know four tools together and that's just how people started putting them together that's how we first started to see the activator come to life um so yeah please do experiment uh let's see can you share the cubit length of the golden fire rings and the harmony cubit also um and gene we actually on sacredmeasures.com we do share the harmony cubit and all the other cubits prior to that now the cubit length of the golden fire that's one that came in from the newer geometries coming onto the planet um you know if you we have like the birthing story of the golden fire ring how we found this geometry um and one of our guides showed us this this blue neon blue rod and we guessed the length of it when we had the length he grabbed it brought it together and it turned into this golden hoop now the golden fire are a, that specific measurement we have not shared but we really would like to share it now then i have actually shared it with a few people but the golden fire rings are a different critter than a standard tensor ring because what makes a golden fire ring function is it's a thuric template and so those people that i've shared the golden fire measure with i make sure that they can work with the etheric templates first um, so what i pe have people do who would like to have the golden fire measure i'm happy to share it but i want to share it responsibly I want people to be able to anchor in the etheric template before they just go playing with a specific measurement. Um, so I've had people making the standard fire ring because the standard fire ring is an etheric template that is anchored into the sacred qubit, the 144 megahertz. So once somebody can successfully anchor in the etheric templates into a standard fire ring and have the sacred heart activated, then I'm happy to share it. Our intention this whole time actually has been to just freely share it, that length embedded into an activation video. So you have to go through, receive the activations in order to get the measurement. And that's probably still how we're going to do it because, you know, it's the regeneration ring is one that we're still being told, no, you can't share with that one because that one almost killed us all in the beginning when we were trying to make that one but as far as the golden fire ring goes yes we have felt that it is time to share that one but we want to share it responsibly so um yeah do contact me if you are wanting to start working with that let's see and then somebody asks how do you measure 
and sign on. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your, your name right. Um, how do you measure the sphere of influence of generators by dowsing? Okay, so in the very beginning, we would, I would actually have my sister always look first at the tools and give her her view, her her viewpoint on the tools. And then we would send them out to other people within a circle that we trusted their site um, that they weren't being always taken down rabbit holes and always functioning from here and receiving information and interpreting it through the mind and not the heart. Mm -hmm. And so we would share the tools with other people. We would ask them for their feedback, their sight, and then we would take all of that and then we would make our description for the tools. Well, after some time, I began to very much trust my sister, Brenda, because Brenda is one of the very few beings that I've ever met on the planet that operates from within the heart and connects straight to source soul. Instead of bringing things through the mind, interpreting them, having the information that you were pulling in and seeing be influenced by programs, beliefs, emotions, experiences, ego, things like that. And then that can skew the interpretation of data that you are receiving. And then you spit it out with, with uh, an interpretation. So Brenda is one person that I've met that can receive information without the filters. And to me, that is phenomenal. So Brenda is the one who I ask for all the readings on the tools, but her and I do the readings together. So I too am able to see the field of influence. So how do we measure the sphere of influence of generators? By seeing them. Um, through your third eye. And so I, you know, when I first started doing this, I couldn't feel energy. I came from a very scientific mind. And over the course of time through making these tools over the past 10 years, it has opened me up and expanded my abilities hugely mm -hmm. to where I can see energy, feel energy, know energy. Um, so how do we measure the sphere of influence is simply by seeing and knowing. Um, but it is really nice when we get confirmations from people. And that's it too, is that over the years, every, you know, we have master dowsers and other people who, you know, always like to send us confirmations of the things that we're seeing with the tools as well. So it's not just us making up what we see and what we believe to be real. We also have other people that do verify those things, though anymore we completely trust what and how we see. Um, Christopher is asking, when making any tensor ring, if the wrong wire ends meet up when joining, does it make a less clean functioning ring? So when you're making a tensor ring, because it is a wire that's been folded in half, twisted, cut to a measurement, and the ends brought back together, like on this specific ring. This has the, the piezoelectric flow of the copper that goes around one direction on one wire, the ends meet back up, and then it has a piezoelectric flow going this way where the ends meet back up. So the ends meet up to where there's a flow and a flow. Now, if you have the ends to where they don't meet up, basically what happens, let me find the connector point, is if you had a flow coming this way, basically it would come to here and it would be hitting up against the flow of the other ring, but it would like make like this little hiccup. It would arc over and continue the flow. So it basically would continue the flow, but it would just have this little tiny little arc over point of where the energy would flow and then it would have to arc over and flow and arc over and flow. So with what had Slim had told us years ago was that it really did not matter on the majority of rings whether or not the ends came back together. 
he always told us that once we started making these higher frequency of the tools that we'll have to ensure the ends come together so with the all the cubit measures that we used to make yeah we just kind of put them together and they work just fine but then once we got to the um, standard fire templates put into the um, to put into the the other rings what we found out was like um, the 144 megahertz ring. If the ends were not connected right on the 144 megahertz and we were trying to put in the standard fire template, it would not hold it. So once we started working with these higher frequencies of rings, we always made sure that the ends came together correctly. But then there became a time, Christopher, when we found that after a while it was just the cutting of the specific length for us in particular that made the cubit measure the etheric one and it did not matter how the ends came together so like if you look at our water rings our water rings the ends don't match but still in the studio if that's why we do a lot of light twist rings is so that we can ensure that the ends always come together but we had the same question too about the water rings well why is it that the water rings where we can't get the ends to come together correctly all the time why are they still fully functional and why are they exactly the same as the others and that was what brenda what the what our guide showed brenda was that when we started cutting the rings and we cut them they were exactly an energetic tool right there there was no positive negative flow to them um, so these newer rings are, they're, they're different. Um, I know that probably opens up a can of worms too. A question from Bill. Please recommend a tool for treating water. Totally any of the tensor fields. Now, when you say treating water, now that's one thing too, because the tensor fields are going to restructure water. They will actually do a physical restructuring of the water because they will bring water to its original crystalline structure. It'll put a high spin rate to it, basically creating ormus in your water in which it will make water lighter in weight in the lab because it has such a high spin rate that it oscillates in and out of physical reality. So you can affect the physical aspect of water with any tensor field. But treating if you mean filtering if you mean getting um you know like radian 223 out of your water you know filtering no the tensor fields will not filter water but they can do a physical restructuring so with this physical restructuring like heavy minerals will drop out um, they'll just settle to the bottom because they're not bonded to the water molecule anymore because the water molecules have become just water and they'll release their bonds. And so the using the tensor fields with water, um, it's, it's going to change the energetics of the water, the memory. Um, but as far as the rings that I would suggest working with water would be the golden fire ring. If you were going to use one single ring, the golden fire is phenomenal. That's my preferred ring for water. But I would suggest the harmonic creation field trio to get the most. So if you were looking for the most effective energetic restructuring, amplifying, um, bringing in all the frequencies and properties that are beneficial to the water, harmonic creation field trio is the way to go. Um, let's see. Does changing of a Schumann resonance affect tensor rings? If it does, how? Good question. We've never really played around with the Schumannic, um, the, the Schumann resonance. Now, I do know that, you know, like we were talking with the 333 ring, how you bring it above a body of water and how it increases the megahertz of that ring to like 336, somewhere around there. So with some of the other rings like the harmony the harmony generator the harmony generator is affected by the denseness of the energy around it because a harmony generator that usually puts out a sphere of influence 
of five and a half to six miles. If you take one downtown Washington, D.C., right by the Capitol, and it only goes out a half a mile. Um, and that's with the Harmony. The Golden Fire generators, they go out seven-eighths of a mile no matter what the denseness of energy is. So what actually affects the, the, the field of influence of the rings and the rings themselves is um, very specific to each frequency of tool. But I do not know how the Schumann resonance affects it. Um, if I was just going to guess by looking at that question would be that as the frequency of the earth and the surroundings raises, the tensor fields are going to work better. And I guess, you know, looking at the 333, how it shifts over a body of water, that would hold true. And as well, how, as well as how a harmony generator can expand farther without the denseness of energy, that would hold true too. That if the frequency and vibration of the earth raises, it allows the tensor fields to expand and work more. Um, just my thoughts there. All right, so now that I'm going back, hey guys, there's a lot on the chat here. Um, I've just been over on the questions tab. Let's see. And some of these are the, are on chat. And sorry, guys, I've just been answering questions that are on the questions tab. So now I'm going back to the chat. Um, what's the difference between the golden fire coil pendant and your new regenerative heart pendant? Which would you recommend for most support in all areas? Okay, so the difference with the golden fire coil mini pendant. So the golden fire coil pendant was one that we call the empath filter. So basically that one is when you're wearing it, it is aligning, connecting, amplifying, strengthening all of your fields and is bringing your light out on this field. So basically what I'm telling people is that that is creating this nice, beautiful bubble around you that filters the information that comes in. That's why we call it the empath filters because it filters the information. So the way I've been explaining it is I don't have a coil pendant, but let's pretend this is a gold fire coil pendant. This produces this nice, comfortable field right through here. Now then the question was in the comparison between the regenerative heart pendant. So let's say this is the regenerative heart pendant where the coil is going to keep you comfortable in this nice field. The regenerative heart and all these other higher frequency pendants are going to take you up above this field to where this field doesn't even affect you. That is where we're going because we don't want to transform this field. Well, we do want to transform this field. This is another way of transforming this field is basically we are taking higher above it to where this field doesn't even touch us. So the majority of people, it used to be the golden fire coil pendant is the one that I would suggest for them. Anymore, I am suggesting the regenerative heart pendant to the majority of people. And I would suggest the infinite light pendant. That's a phenomenal one, but you know, and the two are both the one and a half inch regeneration ring and a golden fire infinity. It's just that the infinite light pendant is made out of solid silver and that guy's like 144 bucks. So it was a little bit less affordable than the regenerative heart pendant, though it is a lot more higher connecting, but still, for that little bit of an extra, I would still say the regenerative heart pendant over the golden fire coil. So the regenerative heart pendant, um, again, it's just taking us higher to where those fields don't affect us as much. All right, and just scrolling down here. Um, oh, and Margaret's asking if I would speak about each ring and to hold up each of the rings and <laughs> i'm sorry i do not have all the rings here i'm actually over at our old studio where we still do a lot of work and where we house the ascension chambers our actual production facility is um just across the way uh, um which we've been in for about one year now and so that's where all the tools are at. I just have a few limited odds and ends laying around here. So 
Um, next time, Margaret, I will have some rings here so that I can speak about each ring and hold them up for everybody to, to see. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, let's see, and just scrolling down the chat here. Does any of your tool clear the personal energy field from ghosts and other entities automatically by wearing it or only with energy work? Um, so, yes, yeah, so James asking if, if we have any of the tools that will automatically do the clearing work, work of ghosts and entities. Um, that's actually the very first tool was the, um, the key pendant, Untalk the key, the key pendant, um, the cross looking guy. That is the one that when I started wearing that one, I never saw a ghost or a wayward since then. Um, and so that's one that activates wh whoever and whatever comes into your field. Now, as far as ghosts, waywards, um, you know, disincarnate spirits, almost any of your golden fire tools, pendants, generators, whatever, are going to be clearing <clears throat> the ghosts and the waywards automatically. Now for entities, that is another thing because entities were just, it's simply an entity is a generic term for a being who is not incarnate, but is not a ghost. It is another other dimensional being. And not all of the tools will clear any of the higher level ones. So what I mean by higher level entities are those that are connected to us through soul contracts um, that are, you know, that our soul agreed upon at one point in time. So there's a lot of these higher level entities that you do need to do consciousness work with to do that clearing. But one of the one of the best tools that we have for clearing entities would be the wings of talk. Um, now that's one that we made specifically for a few different groups of gals who were doing entity clearing and they were hollering for a tool that would just work the best for them. So that's why we created the wings of talk was basically to do a lot of the entity clearing work. <clears throat> now for any of these higher level entities that the tools can't get rid of, that's again, doing consciousness work. So that's where connecting with my sister Brenda is, you know, that's stuff that she can certainly do because she does distance distance work. Um, so you can find Brenda either at the elders3.com or else on the Twisted Sage website, it's the distance healing tab up at the top. How can we work with the dragon pendant? All right, so we actually used to create three different size of dragon wands and some of them were actually little pendants. So I'm not sure, um, Joanne, if you are talking about the older, smaller dragon wands. Now, as far as working with the newer dragon wands, the dragon wand 2.0s, those ones are made with the regeneration ring. And how you would work with those is basically you would use it to create a field, to open up a field with intention. When you open up that field, that is where you can connect with the dragons. It is a very specific space where you're connecting with that higher aspect of all these dragons. So basically the older dragon wands, we would specifically make for each person and each dragon wand would connect to a specific dragon that called to be made for that specific person. Anymore, the dragon wands, the newer dragon wands, you just use to create a field, to open up that field to where you can work with the dragons. Now, once you connect with a dragon, you can actually just use the wand then to run energy. The dragons right now are becoming very prevalent. They are stepping up. Um, they, they're coming in and they're doing a lot of work with a lot of people. The dragons are really phenomenal. Um, so you can use the dragon wand simply after you connect with the dragon and you can just have the intention. Um, make it easy. Don't make it hard. Make it intuitive. Be in the heart space. You can hold the wand and you can just say, I would like to connect with the dragon that's for my highest and greatest good right now. 
And then from there, you can either interface with that dragon or else you can just intend that its energy comes through the wand when you use it. So then if you're using the wand for a specific purpose, whether you are running energy for healing work or for situations or distance work for other people, um, then you're working with the dragon right there. So making it simple. Um, when you're in your heart space, you can intuit the use of these tools a lot. And we used to never give instructions with the tools because we were always told we don't want to limit them because really these tools are limitless in the way that people use them. Um, Stella asks, please speak to what is best to use for 5G. All right. So there is a lot of stuff going on with 5G right now. I'll just give you my experience from when they first turned on 5G during the Super Bowl in Minneapolis in 2018. That was the first mm, precursor rollout of the 5G millimeter wave. Now, with that 5G millimeter wave, and 5G is simply fifth generation, um, with the 5G millimeter wave, we found that, um, well, I'll just tell the story exactly how this went, was we had the Golden Fire generator. There was a gal in the Minnesota area who had it there. Now, she called me one day and said, okay, something's not right because this generator is no longer working. Um, I feel terrible. What's going on? And so when I looked in on it, I could see that there were these spots outside of her home that was affecting the electrical grid system within her house. So the Golden Fire generator wasn't touching it at that time. We had to do some upgrades to it. So what I did at that time was I found those points outside of her home and I anchored columns of light into them and then it shifted the home. So then getting with Brenda and seeing what exactly was going on, they were transmitters, they were communication transmitters. And what we found was, yeah, they were 5G millimeter waves that would then connect into the electrical, the electrical grid, the electrical system within her local neighborhood. And that energetics would follow the electrical system and then come into the house and then basically radiate out that frequency within the home and not necessarily a 5G millimeter wave, but just a funky, non-beneficial energy. And so we put into the Golden Fire Etheric templates to be able to clear that. So then after that, all of the Golden Fire rings and generators were able to clear that energy that was produced from that 5G millimeter wave. So, There is a lot of misinformation and a lot of fear around 5G. Now, I actually went downtown Chicago last summer and I did a study downtown Chicago on the 5G transmitters, the 5G millimeter wave transmitters. And these transmitters are rectangular, flat-faced uh, transmitters that will transmit that millimeter wave in a straight direction for only 200 feet and will not go through solid objects. So downtown Chicago, they would have these rectangular flat face plates on the light poles and street lights, and they would be facing a certain direction. You could use a 5G phone and you could go downtown Chicago and you can be right here within the the connection within 200 feet of that transmitter and receive five bars on your phone of 5g you step aside to where that transmission is not hitting your phone you drastically drop down to zero bars so basically you can stand right beside a transmitter that is transmitting a straight line frequency of the 5g millimeter wave and you can be standing right beside it and you won't feel a thing. It's, it won't do a thing. And so 
As far as the millimeter wave that comes from the 5G transmitters, it is a very limited technology. And as far as that doing us harm, again, for you to be directly affected by the millimeter wave, you have to be within 200 feet of it. It won't go through glass. It doesn't go through walls. But as we have seen, it will connect into electrical systems. Um, and how far that travels, um, we don't know. But to me, it doesn't travel much farther than where your um, the, the, the green box that your electrical transformer that sits on the ground or on the light pole. It doesn't really, once it hits that transformer, to me, it clears it. And so that way, if you're, you'd have to have a local unit of that millimeter wave transmitter hitting your home or your electrical line with between the transformer and your home to be affected by it. So what I'd seen in Chicago last summer with 5G was that it was very limited on how it could affect people. Now, granted, you don't want to stand in front of one of those 5G millimeter wave transmitters. <laughs> it really causes issues. It causes hypersensitivities to electromagnetics. But, and again, that was last summer of 2019 in Chicago that I did that study. And I always wanted to do a video called 5G and the frequencies of funk. But, you know, there there's so much fear with this and there is not really enough verifiable evidence on what exactly is going on because right now there is all this talk about how they're putting 5G up everywhere and even your modems will say 5G and they're just simply fifth generation but your modems aren't creating a millimeter wave but they are a different band with the frequency and so right now the best thing that we have for 5g are the golden fire generators or what i suggest for anybody who is in an area that they are rolling out the 5g is a golden fire generator doesn't matter the size and if you are really close downtown to where they have all the 5g transmitters we suggest a plug-in for your electrical the golden fire disc to either put on your electrical panel or a plug-in and that'll clear your electrical system the golden fire generator will clear the air, so to speak, and then any golden fire pendant or ring on your person because then you your field is will transform those energies. The third thing you need for 5G, be in the heart, stay out of fear. Kind of like the whole concept where we can anchor a column of light into just a standard cell phone tower we anchor a column of light into that and that becomes a beneficial frequency emitter unless a person is in fear and says oh my goodness that cell phone tower is harming me then they override that beneficial frequency that is coming out of there and then they are harmed so staying in your heart and out of fear is the third is the, the fourth tool but actually the first thing that you should do be in the heart, stay out of fear. So another thing that you can do with any kind of frequency emitters is anchor columns of light. So please do check out Light Anchorings 3.0. All right, from Olivia, greetings from New York City. Since getting my wonderful silver infinite light a few months ago, I'm less inclined to wear my wand and or my gateway pendant. Um, yes, when the infant light pendant came out and I started wearing it all the time, I'd even sleep with that pendant on, I stopped wearing copper. Um, I rarely wear copper tools these days because the silver in that infinite light pendant, it is such a higher vibration. Um, or the silver in the clasps, the heck clasps. Now, silver doesn't do this for all tools because there's actually silver that is in um, in a golden fire ring. You can take a golden fire ring, like the Wi-Fi, and you can make it out of silver. And they're exactly the same in the golden fire frequency. The regeneration rings, you take a copper one and a silver one, 
silver is so much more phenomenal in the regeneration ring frequency. So yes, I totally see that where you start wearing the infinite light pendant and you're less inclined to wear your other tools. What would be the best complement pendant with infinite light pendants for EMFs? Um, so your infinite light pendant is actually going to work with the EMFs in that it does have the golden fire infinity in, in it. So again, going back to the cell phone tower, the number one tool would be to be in your heart space, expanded, trust, know that you are untouchable. And then when you were wearing that pendant, um, yeah, that golden fire is going to transform, you know, even the, the most intense electromagnetic non-beneficial fields. Um, let's see, would you please explain the zero point of creation and how to work with that in your tools? Oh yeah, we had a gentleman come in here once, uh, the Rose is asking about the zero point of creation. Um, we actually did a little video called zero point creation, where a guy was using a coil pendant and another ring and he's creating what he called the zero point field um let me think on that one for a second rosa so the zero point creation is something that we see as the center of a torus and in the very center of a torus and that zero point creation so even like these little torus pendants in the very, very center of this torus is that zero point creation. And that's where you can put intentions into that field, into that zero point. Um, gosh, Rosa, I don't know how to answer that question. I'll think on that one. Let's see, Carrie, hey Carrie, can you talk about the tools and ELFs? Oh, ultra low frequencies, non-beneficial thought patterns. The tools and elves, non-beneficial thought patterns. Oh, okay, so elves, non-beneficial thought patterns. So Carrie, I assuming that the ELFs that you're referring to are the non-beneficial thought patterns. Um, so the way the tools, especially the golden fire, are gonna be affecting thought patterns and thought forms. So my daughter, ever since she was born, she has always been a transmuter of thought forms. The random unconscious thought patterns that we all have that float around. That's something that since my daughter was born, she's been transmuting those. And especially going to public schools, she's in fourth grade now, especially when she was going to the public school, um, she got overloaded, um, you know, even from preschool with going in and being around everybody else and their thought forms. So the golden fire generator is the one that we would use for her and her backpack, the two inch, because the two inch is a sturdy golden fire generator that can handle a backpack anymore. I used, I'm starting to put the wings of talk in place of the golden fire generator, but the golden fire generator or the wings of talk are the ones that are clearing those thought forms. Um, and we just know that by, by ju judging how my, and seeing how my daughter reacts to those fields. Um, and that's about the best that I can answer that one, Carrie. Oh, let's see, Margaret's asking, Brian, we ascend to a higher frequency. As we ascend to a higher frequency, is the tube torus that we got made up for ourselves by Brenda still compatible to our energy field? I have the larger one. So the golden fire torus is one that when Brenda assembles that, she attunes that to your light. And yes, the, the golden fire, and especially that Taurus that's attuned to your light, um, has a large enough bandwidth of frequency that you may be here when you first start using it, but as you grow in frequency and vibration, this space is still being held for you. So that's kind of the way it is with, with all the tools, is that 
they are a large field that that this field will hold all these bandwidths of frequency and so no matter as you begin to grow you will be growing into those fields and that kind of is the way that the older rings that we discussed earlier is that they all had a bandwidth of frequency that was so much and as you grew you kind of got to where you were no longer growing and operating within those other bandwidths of those fields now the golden fire we feel because it is made in this new energy system we feel that the golden fire is one that you'll be able to still grow and expand with for some time um, because that's it because a lot of the older tools you would hit a ceiling but a lot of the older tools were made in that older energy and and they just couldn't hold that space um, so I would say yes Margaret that your golden fire Taurus that's attuned to you you are going to be able to grow and expand with that tool for some time yet um, and Olivia is asking also to help clear generator field out and about in New York City would you suggest carrying my two inch golden fire generator energy is very heavy there um so to help clear a greater field when out in new york city yes you know i would suggest taking your golden fire generators with you wherever you go if possible having them in your car because anywhere where you're going to take that out you're going to be affecting everybody now we've had people throughout the years who talk about how these generators change neighborhoods and so having the golden fire generator and you take that out and about you are doing shifting and clearing and connecting and activation work with everybody in this field you're clearing the ghosts the waywards the dense energies are bringing people more into their heart you're connecting them um, you're bringing through the propensity for the sacred heart activation all of that so when you carry these these tools out wherever you go you can shift somebody um I tell you we hear stories every day of these tools changing people's lives and so when you're carrying your generator out about into the city you could be changing somebody's life and not even realize it um, please do take your generators wherever you go um, let's see what would one use for first chakra healing is, is a question um, you know you can use any of the tensor rings for doing work with the chakras but what comes up right now still is using the golden fire and light wand um, that's just what presents for for doing that first chakra healing for you um, and just wanding it that's what presents um, Rosa I lost an item inside my home is there a way or a tool that you can help me locate it <laughs> okay so it's pretty wild how these tools are hopping dimensions um, they just disappear and I don't think they're doing it on their own I think there's others who pull them into those other fields but is there a tool that can help locate it um, the golden fire and light rods the dowsing rods um, me personally I have a tough time using the dowsing rod to find anything um, especially if I have an emotional attachment to it so for me dowsing rods are not the tool for me to use but for so many people you can use a dowsing rod to find to find your tool um, if you use any kind of dowsing whether you're using a pendulum or even your pendant you can start asking it to start to show you the direction to go in and then start also asking it Rosa if it is within this physical plane or not um, <coughs> Kathy asks Brian would you describe how to use your dowsing rods huh I, ha I have an am uncomfortable using dowsing rods that do not spin freely I have oh so you're comfortable with using the dowsing rods that don't spin freely yes the dowsing rods that we make that are on the ball bearing swivels are super sensitive excuse me thank you um, 
so just practicing with those dowels and rods basically when you're holding them and you're just kind of letting them lean forward whether you're using a single or a pair and just having them tilted downwards at an angle just a little bit so that they stay more centered and then just start slowly bringing up that tip so that they become more level because when they're super level they are super sensitive but if you have them dip down just a little bit they have a propensity to stay more forward and are then less sensitive so that's where i would start with on working with those rods is just having that point dip down just a little bit to take that sensitivity on the spin off and of course when you pick up a pair of dowsing rods the majority of people because i when the people pick up these dowsing rods it shows all the time those rods will just sit there and they'll spin and they'll spin in one direction then they'll stop and they'll spin in the other direction and basically when you pick up a pair of those rods and they start spinning they are just doing the clearing and also bringing you into the heart space so then when those rods stop spinning then you're ready to use them it's done the work on you your field and it's brought you into the heart space so being in the heart space is really a huge aspect of using those dowsing rods as well um oh glenn and i'm just asking if there was another chat for questions <laughs> yeah sorry about that and i'm still going through right now the chat um portion of the questions and i will get back to the questions um field here in just a moment um does the infant light pendant help protect against 5g etc too yep so wearing the infinite light pendant um again that does work with electromagnetics and then also carol goes on to ask or does 5g become irrelevant when wearing this and that truly is our goal is to be able to step high enough and strongly enough within our power and alignment to where we are transforming all of these other frequencies they don't affect us that is where we want to be um that includes 5g our own emotional stuff our own inner stuff our outside stuff everything um is that that's where that's where we're trying to go is to be within our own power to where none of that stuff even affects us and again working with your merkaba field is another way that you can work with 5g and all other electromagnetic frequencies we have a website called crystalmerkaba.com if you ever order from us you get one of those little sheets with the merkaba crystalmerkaba.com and that'll work with your merkaba field which is an electromagnetic field which is programmable um all right a lot of great comments thank you guys for <laughs> for sharing comments here um just an idea that about each ring a youtube video um yeah linda was uh suggesting to make a youtube video about each ring and we've certainly been working on creating the product webinars for each of our products so we're we, we've been really trying to, to get more information out there to assist people with buying. And, and of course, if anybody ever wants to get a reading done, um, you know, just call the studio or email us and I'm happy to help find the right tool for you. Uh, let's see, Christopher, the Harmony Ring contains the Ascension Chamber template. But how does that translate to the chambers being built on higher levels at later dates with the newer rings? Ah, uh, yes. So, Christopher, um, so we used to create the, the ascension chambers, which were the 13-foot tall, looks like a medieval torture device that you step up into and the rings come down around you. Um, those very first 5D animator ascension chambers are what we, we put the etheric template for those into the harmony rings. And that's actually where the book that I wrote, the Harmony Handbook and Multidimensional Primer, basically walks you through all of the consciousness work that, um, that we did to create the etheric version of the, um, 
5D animator ascension chamber, the first ascension chambers. So the question was, is the Harmony Ring, um, will that hold the energetics of these newer chambers? No, it will not. Um, the Harmony Ring cannot hold the energetics of the Golden Fire or the Regeneration. Um, so the traditional balance and Harmony Ring, um, it kind of ran into a ceiling to where it could not hold those higher frequencies because it has a certain field, a certain bandwidth of frequencies that it can hold. Um, let's see, Joanne, can you tell me if I use the dragon pendant or the dragon wand with any other tool to increase the energy? Um, yeah, again, you can use the dragon wand. I would suggest using it with the golden fire and light wand. Um, would be a good way to do it but you know people do other things with their dragon wands especially the traditional dragon wand so if you have one of the you know the first versions of the dragon wands adding a golden fire infinity to it um, can help increase the potency of it um, even adding a wi-fi ring with the dragon wand um, so the first version of the dragon wands, um, which I believe you might have, Joanne, is um, those were made, God, I don't remember what frequency those were made with. Um, the first ones I believe were made with the harmony ring and many more were making those with the regeneration ring and a golden fire infinity. So the second, the, this this newest version of the dragon wand is a lot more potent um, than the first version. And I'm sorry we do that. Uh, we try to make rings that can hold that that don't go out of date, um, you know. But they're growing as we're growing. So again, they contain a certain bandwidth of you know of a field where they can hold certain frequencies. And like the regeneration, it's even higher whatever the new ring that we have coming through i don't even know but one of these days we're going to have a new ring of course we're growing and expanding so we will have a new ring someday um oh and then joanne asks does the dragon wand reject entities um yes the all the tensor fields no matter what the frequency is going to be a higher frequency field so you'll have a less probability of anything outside coming in it's not going to transform everything, um, you know, especially when you go to entities because entities exist on these other specific planes that specific tools may not touch those planes. Um, but again, the golden fire tools are some of the better for repelling um, some of those non-beneficial conscious beings. Uh, let's see. I wonder if you could do some sort of stories. Uh, <laughs> Christopher, thank you. Um, Christopher is just making a comment and suggestion about telling stories because they, they, they help people when, when I tell stories and experiences and yeah, someday I just need to write a book or just do an audio book on stories and experiences. <laughs> um, thank you guys for your words you know there's you guys are such a huge support and thank you very much you know i was just reading alfredo and 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 your comments here and um thank you does putting tensor generators on ley lines or vortices amplify the energy or potency um yes Earth geomagnetic grid lines and the tensor tools work together very well. So like on sacred sites where you put these tools on sacred sites, which a sacred site is an intersecting of geomagnetic lines, it can clean, clear, and amplify everything. So like one of our first um, activators we put on a sacred site, they wouldn't let us take it off of there because it was just working together. It was synergizing, harmonizing, holding space, amplifying. So putting a tensor field generator on a vortex, which is an intersecting of geomagnetic lines, um, 
it does do great things there because the 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 geomagnetics and the tensor fields interact with each other um thank you too rosa um also any eta on the mini dowsing rods oh my goodness the mini dowsing rods were one that we were going to create i got a couple sitting in my pen holder in my car that i play with once in a while but I tell you, we never released the mini dowsing rods because I never felt comfortable with them. Um, that's the way all of the tools that we create here is that we work with these prototypes sometimes, you know, for a year until we get the prototypes right to where I feel comfortable releasing them to the public. Now, um, Alfredo, if you send me an email, I would be happy to share a pair of these mini dowsing rods with you. Um, I've sent them out to a few dowsers and haven't gotten feedback yet. And that's basically, you know, as I was saying, I'm not a phenomenal dowsing rod dowser. I, I really, I teach dowsing classes once in a while, but I just don't like to use dowsing rods. And so, for me, using these mini dowsing rods, I thought they were going to be so cool because you could carry them in your pocket. But to me, they are hard to use. I think we got the balance right on them, but they're still really hard to use. So anyway, um, Alfredo, please send me a email. Um, Olivia, thank you. Oh, when I speak a little bit about chemtrails and nanotechnologies. Chemtrails. Sorry, I dropped my dropped my ring down here. Um, okay, chemtrails. Here we go. We are powerful creators. We are powerful creators, especially when we create out of fear, out of experience, out of ego, out of survival. We create this world around us. All these realities. So there is no one single base reality on this planet. There are multiple realities and we all live in all these various multiple realities on the planet. Most of them come together as a thing, you know, what do they call it? The mass consciousness grid. When chemtrails first began, somebody was in fear. They said, chemtrails somebody else was like oh my god we got chemtrails too it was a local reality it was not a reality as in mass consciousness grid reality more and more people began to be in fear chemtrails i have chemtrails too more local realities sprang up pretty soon you have enough people creating realities to where they become a greater reality. Wherever I go, I do not see chemtrails. They are not a part of my reality. When people like Organite Austin, who have done the work, he wrote the New Science of Rain book. When you do work through consciousness and you go, and people who are doing the chem busting, there's some pretty phenomenal people out there who are using tools, tensor tools and others, to clear chemtrails. These tools are broadcasters, space holders, attention holders, intention holders for consciousness. And they clear chemtrails through consciousness. So chemtrails, nanotechnology, 5G, reptilians, all the stuff. You can focus on whatever you wish and feed that reality. Remember, this is just a big hollow game that we are in. Where we put our attention is the reality that we begin to create for ourselves and that we then help to create for the rest of the world. So that's my view on chemtrails and nanotechnologies and viruses and computer chipping all the stuff you can focus your attention 
my sister taught me a thing called discernment discernment from the sacred space of the heart when you go into the heart space and you look at something how does it feel does it pull you out of the heart space does it put you into fear if it does is that the reality that you wish to feed so for me when i look at anything before i look at anything go to the heart space check it out if that's for if you know the human is pretty hardwired and likes to dwell and waddle in those spaces of fear. But that is not part of the new paradigm. We can recreate an entire different world based on our attention. We create realities, local realities, and then mass consciousness realities. So send it light send it love it's real but it's not real i hope that answers Phew. all right are we still shipping internationally yes the u.s postal service and most all postal services in the world are very much considered um necessity so we are certainly shipping worldwide right now um Awesome. We're going to go over to the questions tab. <clears throat> All right. Would you talk about your new bracelets? I wear a silver bracelet on each wrist. I love them. So the Heka clasp. Um, the Heka clasp is one of the bracelets that is just, it's nice and lightweight. Um, hardly tell you have it on you know, physically, but energetically, they're phenomenal. You can wear a bracelet or a finger ring or whatever, or a ring in your pocket, and it is doing the work throughout your entire field. Of course, we always suggest having a pendant because it is working directly with your light and expanding that, but as far as your body field, having a bracelet or anything within your field is gonna be bolstering your entire field. So, um yeah uh the bracelets are phenomenal and yeah judy i like to wear a bracelet on each wrist too um and then we also have the generator bracelets which are just another phenomenal tool but not sure what else to say about that judy so again um please do re-ask questions if i need to keep going on them um let's see is it okay to do a silver or gold electroplate over my copper pieces most definitely marla um please do electroplate if you feel now that's what slim Sperling always did was he took copper and they would electroplate silver and then gold and then they would do that uh, consecutively for nine layers of silver and gold because you can't electroplate gold right on copper because it'll actually mm, transform it it alchemizes the gold. Um, so yes, you can certainly electroplate. Now when Slim did that, Slim was always looking for ways to boost the tools by doing physical things like electroplating or putting beads onto them because Slim at the time did not understand the etheric templates and that the true power and potency of the rings lies in the higher dimensional aspect of the tools. So he was doing everything he could on the physical. And one of the things that he did was electroplating and it does bring a different subtle energy to it uh what are the benefits of wearing the headache ring does it also work with your environment or would its field of influence only be on the body uh so the headache ring so headache is the symbol of the water elemental when you wear a headache ring it is raising the frequency and vibration of the water in your body like for me if i put on a copper headache ring it it's, it brings so much energetics to that hand and that arm. The first time I was wearing a copper headache ring, I had to take it off and switch hands because it was almost making my hand numb as it was raising the frequency and vibration of the water in my body. Um, so that's basically all the headache ring is doing is raising frequency and vibration of the water, um, which that's all it's doing. That's pretty amazing. Um, and so it doesn't influence your environment it is only influencing your field um which your field you know your fields can extend 10 to 12 feet out um but to me working with the water to me it looks more like just a few inches that it extends your field when you're wearing the headache. um 
When creating the net field of neutrality, the etheric templates get infused on that higher level with the copper as it's being twisted. Could you expand on anchoring light, building how to anchor each ring created? What works best for you in creating a tensor ring in the physical? All right, so Samson's asking about creation of tensor fields. And you know, Samson, I think we'll save that question for either a mono a mono answer or the next time around because we've spent our hours so I want to answer a few more easy questions um yeah Samson please do come back to that one how's the cosmic sun disk in the golden fire Taurus differ um the golden fire Taurus is working to me that one is more for like hmm, doing physical healing clearing things like that um it's, it's working kind of more on your physical where, and this is just how I, in a quick interpretation of the golden fire tours versus the cosmic sun disc. I see it as very much opening, expanding, um, bringing a higher vibration throughout your entire physical body. Um, I love the cosmic sun disc, put the two together are pretty fantastic, which is why, this little pendant has both the golden fire and the regeneration. It has both of those Tauruses together. Um, so yeah, the, the golden fire to me is more comforting working on the physical. Um, a lot of us sleep with those. We curl up with them at night or put them on places that we need. The cosmic sun disc is one that I put it usually above my head for opening expanding and changing the physical body too. Um, let's see. Just making sure I'm answering as many questions here as I can. Because some of these are both on the questions and the chat. Okay. With any of the creations, what tool has the largest sphere of influence? Um, right now is the seven and a half inch Harmony generator has a 12 mile sphere of influence. So the seven and a half inch Harmony generator, that is the one that we usually recommend to people who are doing work with agriculture as it covers a larger area. Um, that or else one of the original 5d animator ascension chambers which creates a torus about 300 miles wide um so really the 5d animator ascension chamber is our largest sphere of influence tool um we're working on creating a new set of tools for a friend out in la um to do gritting work with and it's our intention and it's been our intention with the little pyramids but now we're kind of working on these other tools too to be able to create grids that are interconnecting to each other. So that way we can actually expand and create a field globally. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's gonna be coming through pretty soon. Um, could you do a tutorial on how to make a plymella? <laughs> that is a tough one, Christopher. Um, yeah, because I have my little template that I use to make the plymella. So yeah, I'd be happy to share that sometime here too. So I think we've hit 50 questions. We'll probably do this again here sometime. So I see we still have a few people on here, 30 people right now. Um, thank you guys for being here. Please do show up tomorrow if you feel. I'm going to be setting up a phenomenal grid here, and we're going to be allowing everybody to step into it, to place themselves, to place others, situations, their home, everything into this grid that will be transmitting the same work that we'll be doing tomorrow on that meditation and that will hold that space for you for the entire month of april um it's going to be pretty phenomenal fantastic and that one is at four o'clock denver mountain standard time tomorrow saturday april 4th and um, that one will be recorded too so no worries there um and just reading some other comments here and thank you guys yes yeah i know you would like to see brenda here too sometime 
Brenda is busy calving cows. She's being a mama to cows right now. And so she's been busy, 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 because that's, that's what she does. Um, she raises very high vibration beef cattle. So, um, and some of them aren't really cows. You can tell by looking in their eyes. Some of them are here's watchers, even though they know it's going to go for them. They're just still wanting to be here just to be around to witness. Um, yeah, Linda, tomorrow we will definitely have that recorded. Um, wonderful, you guys. Well, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. All right, in here. Take care.